Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Total Biscuit. I'm here to ask and answer one simple question. WTF is Marvel Puzzle Quest Dark Reign. It's another Puzzle Quest game. With Marvel in it. My job's done. It's by a company called Demiurge. They're responsible for Shoot Many Robots, which was a rather repetitive but reasonably enjoyable game. And published by D3, of course. Came out on mobile first and then made its way to Steam. And it's free to play, which is really weird for Puzzle Quest. Puzzle Quest initially came out on the DS, and then came out on every other bloody platform imaginable. I believe I own it on four separate platforms, actually. DS, 360, PC, and on the iPad. Very, very good game. Incredibly good game. Actually, a great gateway as well. You want to get someone that's really into very casual games into more hardcore stuff? Puzzle Quest is an ideal bridge, because it's got some interesting traditional mechanics mixed in with the whole match 3 casual nature of it, and it can get pretty damn tough at times. It's actually a very, very good game. It's one of my personal favorite puzzle games ever. But it's never really managed to replicate its success with future titles. Puzzle Quest Galactrix had a bunch of really weird, strange design decisions and also just wasn't as fun. Then you had stuff like Puzzle Kingdoms, you had Puzzle Quest 2 eventually, which... Again, wasn't as fun. It was more of a dungeon crawler, but it wasn't as enjoyable as Puzzle Quest, where you were able to build up a kingdom and take over castles and train various different mounts. You could ride around a spider and you would gain its abilities. You could kidnap people. Well, not kidnap people. You could beat enemies into submission and then put them in a dungeon and learn their secrets and learn new magic spells. And it was great. But they've never really done that again. So does Marvel Puzzle Quest manage to replicate the formula? Well, certainly in terms of its battles it does, but what about its progression? Because that's actually what a lot of the best stuff about Puzzle Quest involved. Well, the options menu contains basically nothing. It is a 2D tile-based puzzle game, so it's not something you really need to worry too much about. But it would be nice. You know, maybe some flashier effects on the PC. At least you can have it in higher resolution. It doesn't appear to be nasty and stretched, as you might imagine from an iPad port. You can skip tutorials as well, which is always nice to see, and you've got separate sliders for music and sound effects, but that really is about it. I should point out the game runs at 30 FPS, and this is about the only time I'm going to let people get away with that, because it is a tile-based, turn-based puzzle game. There, at no point will 30 FPS actually make you lose or make gameplay more difficult. But, as someone that says if you have not played Hearthstone at 120 FPS, you've never lived... I would say the more FPS, the better. It just, it involves smoother looking visuals. There is nothing wrong with that. There is no disadvantage to having a higher frame rate. None. It's just universally good. Okay. So. It's popping up a bunch of stuff, and it's going to keep doing that. There you go. So there's three different messages. These are all kind of featured events that can be done through here. So these are things that change from time to time. You also get ranking in them, and you can unlock special heroes by doing them. And this is the prologue, which is the story-driven stuff, and I imagine this just keeps going. I, I would think that there's probably something after the prologue. that will be a little bit weird otherwise. You see, I've completed pretty much all the missions here, and then I've started doing missions here, and unlocked these two campaigns. So, let's talk about the progression, because if you've played Puzzle Quest, you probably know about how the mechanics work, but there are some changes I'd like to point out regardless. So, you can recruit heroes, yeah, and all of the game's progression is based on this hero roster right here. These are the heroes I've got. Level 1, level 2, level 2, level 6, level 15. Why is this level 15? Marvel's doing it again. They're doing it again with the randomness. They, they absolutely love these kind of card game mechanics when it comes to dealing with getting heroes in their games, and I hate it. Absolutely hate it. Which is weird because I'm the kind of guy that loves CCGs, but this is not a CCG. Stop pretending it is. Recruit heroes and train and all that kind of stuff. If you go to recruit heroes, you'll notice that to get heroes, I've got to spend either this currency or this currency. So these will get me standard heroes. This is much, much easier to get. This is kind of a premium currency, which is very difficult to get. And you can acquire it here. You want to spend $100 on it? Here you go. Get the stock salary. Don't do that. That would be silly. But you can also earn these coins in-game from time to time. Although, I don't believe I've ever earned enough to get 300 together. I'm sitting on 25 right now. It's, it's a little difficult to get that. So let's buy a hero, shall we, from the standard pack. There we go. New reward. What do we get? Something random. Ah, an uncommon Spider-Man. This is a different variant, by the way. His ability includes snarky remark. Spider-Man Bagman. I don't even know what that is. But we'll have a look and see if we can put that in our roster. So unfortunately, the roster is limited to five. I'm going to throw away 
this my Black Widow because, well, she's not very well leveled up. I can just get rid of her. That's fine. So I can sell her off, get rid of her. Yep, destroy the Black Widow and recruit my new Spider-Man, which, funnily enough, does not let you do it through here. You've got to click up here. There we go. Bagman Spider-Man. What the hell is that? I, I don't know. <laughs> but I think it has a different set of powers, as far as I can tell. Why is cracking? Yeah, this is... This is very clearly a different set of powers to my other Spider-Man, which makes the whole thing just very, very strange. Yes, I would like to recruit that. Thank you very much. There we go. Spider-Man Bagman is now in my force. So you can actually have a force of three different Spider-Men. The game is a three-on-three -three based system, which is very odd. Really, really strange. Now, if you want to level these guys up, this is where things start to get really weird. The randomization is bad enough. This gets even more silly. So in order to level up his actual powers here, of which there are five levels of them, According to that, it's like one of 13 powers. Like, what, what the hell are the other ones then? Can you swap them out? I don't even know, but whatever the case. You can level them up using the currency, which you would never want to do in a million years. 500 currency for that? You kidding me? So you're basically spending $5 for that. It gets even worse, by the way, the higher the level the heroes are. 1,250 coins. Jeez, that's about $10 at least for that. But you're not supposed to do that. You're supposed to collect what are called covers. And you can actually collect covers the same way that I was just doing it there. Let's let's buy another hero, for instance, using these this ISO 100 currency. Oh, that actually gave me another uncommon. I'm pretty lucky, I gotta say, with these heroes. I got a modern version of Hawkeye. There you go. Let's buy one more, just for the sake of it. You can also acquire covers through... There we go. There's That's a, another variant of Black Widow. If I'd got that, and I already had Black Widow, it would give me a level up in this skill right there. Yeah. And you can also acquire covers by doing missions. Uh, sometimes they have covers as a reward, sometimes they don't. Some of these levels can be repeated, if I recall correctly. And you can actually earn the other reward here, so those are hero points. That's the currency that I was talking about there. Although, I think you can only, you can only earn each reward once, so there's actually four rewards available here. I earned the health pack, but I could also get ISO 100. ISO, I don't even know what the other three are, but hey. So leveling up the heroes is very strange, and it, it gets even weirder. And sorry, I've accidentally gone back to the main menu here. It gets even weirder after that. So leveling up, up the abilities is done differently to leveling up the actual hero themselves. So if I wanted to level up Iron Man, train, I can train them here, as you can see here, by spending ISO. So that levels them up to level 3. So he's going to be able to do, I assume, a little bit more damage. All the damage is actually indicated down here, as you can see. And he's got a bit more health, but it doesn't level up his abilities, which are done in a completely different way. Why? Why is there not just one unified way of leveling up? This, this would make sense, but a lot of the stuff in this game doesn't really make an awful lot of sense. The monetization model is just really odd, and I don't know if the game's actually trying to screw me over. Anyway, let's get into a mission and show you exactly what's going on here. We're going to go and fight against Juggernaut, who is level 7. Chance to win Hawkeye, or Hawkeye. Or another Hawkeye. All right. Well, I didn't want Hawkeye. I just got rid of him. But apparently Black Widow level four is part of my team for this battle. I have no idea why. I don't want her to be part of my team. But it's okay because I have Bagman Spider-Man. And also, I am wearing far too little clothing woman. Which seems to be a fairly common problem with Marvel superheroes. All right. Let's get into the game. I can also add a boost here. This is something that I acquired. You can buy these for ISO, which again is, is a currency that's very easy to get. So that's just the way of it. And you can also sometimes get them as random items in the game. Now, we're going to get into a fight. And every time you go into one of these fights, you get a little cutscene. The art style seems really weird with it. I've got to admit, I don't really know much about the modern Marvel stuff when it comes to comics because I don't read them. But some of the art looks a little bit amateurish, to say the least. Which was really strange. Now... What's going on with this? So if you play the original Puzzle Quest, you might be horribly confused as to why there's three characters here, why they just swapped around, why each of these has different symbols on them. Well, in the original Puzzle Quest, you had several colors of mana, which you would use to charge abilities, and then you had swords, which did direct damage, and then you also had a bunch of other things like experience and coins. In this game, every single tile that you match does damage in some way, but it does damage based on who you have in your party, and it swaps you around 
depending on who does the most damage with a particular tile. So Spider-Man, or apparently my Bagman Spider-Man, does the most damage with blue, so it's going to swap around to him. That also then puts Spider-Man at the front, which means Spider-Man is the one taking damage. However, Moonstone is the one that does the most damage with the black gems, so it swaps over to Moonstone there. You see what I'm talking about. You also have these, which are city tiles. These are specific to the board that you're on, and there's jungle tiles, there's like a high-rise set of tiles as well, and that will enable you to activate additional abilities, including Hot Dog Stand, which gives delicious hot dogs to your allies. Some of these are quite funny. Narrow Alley destroys the left and right side of the board. You know, it's some really interesting stuff going on with that. So, unlike the original puzzle quest, you are doing damage all the time. Now, the way that the enemy uses his abilities is a little bit interesting. I'm waiting for him to get enough. He should be able to activate his headbutt ability any moment now. So I'm going to swap around. I assume he's going to cat. Oh, there we go. He's going to use that directly. Now, that actually, of course, did some damage, some significant damage to Moonstone. So I need to get Moonstone the hell out of the way here. But a lot of these abilities actually don't work in this way. Yeah? Because I'm fighting against a boss, it's more of the traditional puzzle quest style of he's earning points, so he's activating abilities, and I'm trying to stop him from earning points in the stuff that he is able to use. But in some of the other fights, what actually happens is the henchman will leave special tiles on the board, which tick down after a few turns, and then have a negative effect on you, so you can actually get rid of them. It's a little bit of an interesting twist, I've got to say. Okay, and I really need to stop getting some more reds. Oh, did I get that? Oh, I hope I got that. No, I think that was him beating the crap out of me. Okay, this is getting silly. Uh, Alright, I'm gonna stun him. Thankfully, I actually have the stun ability. Otherwise, this would be really, really messy. I'm actually probably gonna lose this. It, I've got a real beating at the hands of these guys. Not too good. So, the pace of the game is a lot faster than the original. And I can actually appreciate that, because that could really, really drag on. I need to switch over to Black Widow, because otherwise things are going to get really, really bad all of a sudden. How do I switch to Black Widow? Which powers use Black Widow? Uh-oh. I don't think any of them do. I'm about to lose one of my characters. This is going to suck. Oh, well. Never mind. So it does make everything go faster, which I do kind of appreciate. So that's Moonstone out of the picture. That's not so good. Now I can activate Black Widow. Okay. I understand just. <laughs> but aside from that, it's pretty much the same old puzzle quest, really. And you're not going to be surprised, I don't think, by too many of the mechanics. This is a pretty bad example, and I'm probably going to lose this battle anyway, so whatever. But this is a pretty bad example because you don't actually get to see the three-on-three -three stuff that's going on and the way that the henchmen actually operate. So I'll show you that as soon as I lose this. I think this is actually too high level for my heroes anyway. It's a level 7 juggernaut and I'm using like level 6 heroes and a level 4 I think so that's probably why I'm losing horribly but never mind. Let's stop them getting the greens. There we go. Get a yellow as well. Excellent. Oh, Spider-Man just got his ass kicked. Alright. Anyone else? Yeah, this is not going to go well. <laughs> I need Widow Sting, and I can't use it. Never mind. The game's just got a lot of really weird choices, both in terms of its monetization model, but also in terms of the way that its gameplay works. And to some degree, I can actually appreciate that, because they have shaken up the old Puzzle Quest formula. Some of it is in kind of a weird way, but for the most part, the battle mechanics are actually pretty fun. And the henchman in particular, leaving these special tiles on the board which tick down and you can actually remove, was a really, really good idea. It's a little bit more, it's a little bit less frustrating, yeah? It, it gives you the idea that you will actually be able to stop some of the stuff that's coming at you. Whereas in the original puzzle quest, often a lot of that was really out of your hands. Sometimes you could stop your opponent getting the mana they needed to blast you down with an ability, but more often than not, it seemed like it, it just came down to the look of the draw and which tiles you got and which tiles they got. In this case, that's not really so much... Let's try that sentence again, because I really screwed that one up. Let's try words. Words are good. In this case, I don't think that's necessarily true. You've got way more control over the board than what you did in the previous titles. And I lose, but there you go. So I can appreciate that. But... But... There are some other mechanics that I really don't like. So I just got my hero's ass completely handed to them. 
So if I check this hero out, no, that's not gonna work. Is it recruit heroes? Train maybe? Maybe it's under train. There we go. You see this? So there's some bloody healing mechanics going on. Yeah, once you if a hero goes down, you have to wait upwards of an hour to get them back unless you have a healing item, which as you might imagine, actually cost currency. I don't believe they cost the premium currency, so that's okay. Can I heal this? I, I think I have to go into a fight in order to heal it. Let's go to one of these hammer fights, for instance. There we go. So I'm going to replay that mission. So I get Hawkeye for this, but if I want to revive a hero, I've got to use a revive item to do that. Alternatively, if I've run out of revive items, which is very, very possible, especially if you go into the harder missions, then you either have to use one of your spare heroes, which is going to suck for you because you only have a roster space for five. I know it's showing six. This is just because the game gives you one for this particular battle. And I assume that's actually used as something to help you out in the case that you lose all of your heroes. But adding to your roster requires, again, currency in order to increase your roster size. And you just need more heroes, which again could also cost you currency. Those wait until we heal up mechanics are designed specifically for mobile devices. They have no place, as far as I'm concerned, in a PC title. Absolutely none. Yeah? The original Puzzle Quest I played for hours. And this game seems to go out of its way to stop you from doing that. Any damage that you take to your heroes whatsoever will persist into the next battle unless you wait. It's absolutely horrible. Now, this is what I was talking about earlier, this weird three-on-three -three thing. So I can actually target a very specific member of their squad. And if I look at it, it will also show me, all right, who does the most damage? I think they all kind of do the same from what I can tell. But I, sh I assume morale boost is something that's done by the lieutenant. So if I want to stop him doing morale boost, then maybe you want to take the lieutenant out, if it's all possible. Or Lieutenant, for those of you in England. I don't want to confuse you by using weird words. Apparently, they're both right, so there you go. But you'll notice these Skull Gems are ticking down, so I want to try and get rid of these, if at all possible. Which actually does introduce an interesting element of skill to the game, and it does make you feel like you're a little bit more in control than the previous iterations of the game. So I like that change. But I do still find this whole three-on-three -three thing to be rather confusing. It's very, very strange in the sense that it will automatically select which hero does the most damage. So you keep swapping between the heroes for no apparent reason. So that's a little bit of a weird one. There we go. Let's get rid of that gem so you can't do anything with that. But the addition of these special gems, depending on which of the battlefields you're in, is very cool. Because it gives you a bunch of different abilities on the side which you can use. So I appreciate that they put that in there. There we go. Grab that red. Very nice and easy. I think we might want to get rid of some of that stuff. We're going to use Arrow Stab, actually, to destroy that green tile to make sure that he can't use his Assault Rifle ability. So that's that gone, and then we can match up with that. There we go. And overall, the puzzling is still as satisfying. In fact, arguably more so because of the speed of it all. You know, it's much more quick fire. You're, you're always doing something. I feel perhaps maybe that was just designed to make the game feel a little bit more casual to people that didn't otherwise understand it. That's a, possi that's a possibility, but I still think it really does improve the pace of the game. And I can actually appreciate that. There we go. I've used the snarky remark to increase the timer on that. And then we can do a containment breach, bring up a crit tile. But it's the progression that I've got a problem with. And you cannot talk about a Puzzle Quest game without talking about that progression. Because that was what made Puzzle Quest different. That's what made it special, that it had this overarching progression. It wasn't just you going into a fight and doing the match three thing and then that was it. Each fight had some context because you would earn things in that fight which would advance your overall character. And you still have that, but the way that they've done it is just so bizarre. And from what I can tell, seems to be rather unfair and luck-based. It's a really confusing system, and I think it's been done that way on purpose so that you can't point to something specific and say, that's unfair. I don't like that mechanic. I think that mechanic's money-grubbing and so on and so forth. It's really hard to make that argument because the system is so weird, and it seems to do its best to try and hide any kind of pay-to-win aspects that I don't know if it is fair or not. It's almost like I'm just sitting there waiting for the game to screw me. And, you know, that's never actually a good thing. I should never feel that way when I'm playing a game. It's like, oh, I'm enjoying this. I wonder when it's going to do something that's going to ruin my day. I shouldn't be thinking that. I should just be enjoying the game. And there are ways and means of avoiding 
that kind of thing. You don't have to have that system. You don't have to do a sodding free-to-play, but with the mobile market the way that it is, it seems like these kind of games are being developed with mobile in mind, and as such, they are plagued with mobile-specific mechanics. Things like the timer and the randomness and the in-app purchasing and all sorts of nonsense like that. Does it ruin the game? I don't know. It's, it's going to be a difficult thing to say because so far it hasn't ruined it for me. I've still had a decent amount of fun with it, but I don't know when, if at all, the game is going to do something that really pisses me off. And it's hard to say that you shouldn't play it because it's still free at the end of the day. You can try it for yourself and see whether or not it ends up being your thing. But my concern is that if someone gets so dedicated to it that they eventually get to the point where you really can't progress too far without actually using real currency, then they're going to end up being horribly screwed by that. I don't know. <laughs> Why must they do that? Why can't they just use the traditional gaming model? Why can't I just buy this game for $10 or $20 and have access to everything and have a progression system that makes sense? Is that not okay? Is that not allowed anymore? Is that something that's outside of the realms of possibility? Apparently so. And that makes me sad. Not every game needs to have some weird free-to-play model. Certainly not every game needs to have this utterly bizarre card game random gambling model that seems to be coming into a lot of titles these days. There are some games that work with that, like collectible card games. Those work pretty well with that. But there are others that really, really don't. And I don't think Puzzle Quest needs that. I don't think it should have it by any stretch of the imagination. I gotta say, Bagman Spider-Man sucks, and I shouldn't be using him because apparently he's terrible. I should be use just using the regular Spider-Man. Dear Lord, dear Lord. I'll show you a little bit of the verses because those events are a little bit strange. You might think, oh, sounds like it's got multiplayer. It kind of does. The versus events are a little bit weird because they're, they're sort of, I wouldn't even say that they're asymmetrical. The multiplayer is just the AI, as far as I know anyway, is just the AI playing with someone else's heroes under their name. And then you try and beat that roster. If the game has any actual multiplayer, then it's pretty well hidden. I think the only place it could be would be under Shield Versus. I haven't actually checked that out yet. Again, it's one another example of the game not really explaining itself all that well. When I went into the events against other players, I assumed other players would play against me, but it's actually just their roster being played by the AI, so... Yeah, not as much. Not as much. Let's do a photon blast. There we go. Down you go. That was pretty powerful. These cutscenes. Yeah. Yeah. Don't like the look of them. What random reward did I get? Oh, great. Another sodding Hawkeye. Stop giving me Hawkeye. <laughs> Please. Okay, let's look at the other stuff. So, shield versus. Here we go. Using the danger room, you can compete against other players and their teams in versus missions. So, in other words, it's probably not against other players at all. Yeah, it's the same system. So, it, you go into this and you play against someone's other team, but they're not the ones that are actually playing. So that's the way that that works. So these featured events, as you can see here, give you chances to win stuff. Uh, play against maybe Nat31. There we go. Who actually has a level one. This should be fairly easy, I think. Should be able to make that happen. So you can play these events to earn some currency stuff. And you can create a team of Dark Avengers. I only actually have one Dark Avenger. So I guess I'm going to use heal again to get her back in the fight. And then you fight against the other player's roster. And then you see how it goes. And you have a chance of winning some special heroes and things like that. I like those events. You know, it, it's good. It, it's giving you constantly a different set of rules to work with. But admittedly, the reason they're doing that kind of stuff is because they really want you to expand your roster to ludicrous levels so you can actually compete in that. I'm lucky that I happen to get a Dark Avenger. Otherwise, I wouldn't be able to play in this at all. So, you know, there's something to kind of consider there. I assume the AI is just playing to the best of its ability at this stage. All right, I need to be looking to try and get a Photon Blast with a lot of reds on the board. I don't have too many reds on the board here. Let's see if we can get rid of a few more. Oh, she's clearing reds. This is not going well. Okay, never mind. Well, I could take some greens. Oh, never mind. Flattened her anyway. I, I keep forgetting she's only level one, so... One of my first attempt, I gained more points, which I assume gave me ranking, and it gave me a reward of some description, which was ISO 8. There we go. So, you know, it is kind of cool. You, uh, when, when you get the top, if you get the top rank at any rate, you can actually earn these. So it is a bit competitive. You play against other guys on the leaderboard, but you've got to play for like hours in order to really get your rank up there. So you've got to play again and again and again against different people, which is 
I guess it's a good system. I like the fact that it's there, but it's it's fairly obvious that it's designed to just make you get more heroes and expand your roster at a ludicrous rate to compete and get all the rare stuff. And I always think that that's a disservice to the fans of Marvel because who said... Who says that these heroes are my favorite heroes? I may never get my favorite hero because it's so random. Bagman, Spider-Man? I mean, really? I, uh, what is that? Is that some kind of in-joke? I, I do not even understand what any of that is about. I don't have a clue what that is. But I have him. But I also have the amazing Spider-Man. And this Dark Avengers thing. And the... I don't know. What, what do they call her? Orgasmic Storm? I, I don't know. But this... This piece of art is not particularly good in comparison to that cover. So, the, the game just leaves me feeling really confused. It's like, I like some parts of it. I think that it's quite compelling. And, of course, it's Puzzle Quest. So, that's a good reason to play again. But I don't think the roster building aspect of it is anywhere near as good as the traditional Puzzle Quest. Building up your kingdom and all these other great things you could do with all of the little side games that you had. Like the, the crafting minigame, which allowed you to craft more powerful items, or the training minigame, the capture stuff. It, you know, all of that stuff was really, really nice, and the progression system made sense. It was gain experience, gain levels. Really simple as that. Gain gold, buy stuff. Not that hard. But this game seems to just throw all sorts of different weird monetization mechanics at you and hope that it works, and I can only imagine it is designed to confuse and obfuscate some unfairness in some respect. Not that the game has actually screwed me as of yet. I haven't spent any money on it. I have no intention of spending any money on it. So it leaves me in a spot where it's very, very hard to recommend. I don't think it's better than the original Puzzle Quest. I think if you haven't played the original Puzzle Quest, you need to go and get it. It's a far better game than this. But it's still decently fun, and it has some interesting ideas going for it. And I can only really appreciate that. It would be unfair for me to condemn the changes in the actual gameplay battle mechanics because I think they really did innovate a little bit there and they changed the formula around in a way that actually works. So I don't know whether or not to recommend it, but I guess since it's free I don't have to. You can try it yourself and see what you think. Marvel Puzzle Quest, ladies and gentlemen. Currently available on Steam and mobile devices for free. My name's been Total Biscuit. Thank you very much for watching. And I'll see you next time.